Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz, and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking in depth about thunderstorms and potentially severe ones across central parts of Queensland and then along the New South Wales coastline as well. We've got a round of potentially severe thunderstorms later on this week that we need to break down in great detail. I'm also going to be giving a tropical weather update in this forecast update and a temperature forecast for Western Australia. Things are about to get quite hot and quite wet pretty soon from now. And before we go any further, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're getting closer and closer to 20,000 the support lately has been much appreciated, but let's get stuck straight into things over in central Queensland. So you can see temperatures already starting to explode in terms of heat across parts of central Queensland out towards Mount Isa, 37 degrees already at 10 a.m. It's getting quite warm there and even down the central Queensland coastline as well in the Capricorn district. It is going to be a warm day today into the early 30s with a high amount of humidity expected. Now this is going to present the chance of some showers and thunderstorms throughout the course of today. There's already some clouds starting to build across parts of central Queensland and this cloud here could turn into some isolated pulse thunderstorms, especially around the Mackay and Yelbaru area, and then down towards the Bundaberg and Gladstone area later on this afternoon and evening. But the chance of thunderstorms is very small at this time. The majority of this uh, rainfall, if any does fall, is just going to be from some light showers that are going to be passing through the area. And this is all being powered by a low pressure system that's sitting in the Tasman Sea right now and just bringing ashore the conditions that are good for some shower activity and some uh, rainfall activity. However, again, nothing too significant and expected. Similar story for Wednesday, just drier and hotter still, but you can see this low pressure system in this trough developing across central Queensland. This becomes very important for the forecast from now on. So let's watch this closely and see what it blows up throughout Thursday, because this is the day that I want to be watching quite closely. Thursday morning, you can see some showers and thunderstorms developing across central parts of Queensland, outside of Roma, north of uh, Roma and up towards the Tarum, Injun and Rolleston sort of area in Queensland's uh, self-proclaimed thunderstorm alley. You can see temperatures very, very warm across parts of central Queensland as well, especially for this time of the year. Up to 42 degrees expected in Winton by 3 p.m., 41 for Longreach, and then high 30s to low 40s for a lot of other locations across central parts of Queensland. And with this trough, the conditions are going to be primed from about midday onwards for some thunderstorms to develop, specifically around the Tarum and Injun area. We are expecting a good round of severe thunderstorms to develop there from around midday. These thunderstorms will then continue to track in a northeasterly direction up for the Queensland coastline between Rockhampton, Gladstone, Agnes Water and Bundaberg heading for those locations by later on this afternoon and evening and really becoming some nasty severe thunderstorms by around 5, 6 and 7 p.m. Now these severe thunderstorms are most likely between a location extending from Gympie to the northeast towards Emerald along this line here. This is where the highest chance of severe thunderstorms is and just taking a look at the storm setup here, I don't want to sound alarmist or anything but I do reckon there's a good chance of supercell thunderstorms at this time. Potentially um, uh, nasty supercell thunderstorms as well with large hailstones, heavy rainfall, damaging winds and the isolated risk of twisters or tornadoes across parts of central Queensland. So again, make sure you are staying weather aware, staying on, to, on top of the radar imagery, especially Thursday afternoon because things are going to get quite nasty indeed. Now let's break down these thunderstorms for you right now. What is driving them? Of course, we've got this surface trough extending across central parts of Queensland, providing the instability in the atmosphere and the low pressure required to promote these thunderstorms um, at least initially early on in the afternoon, but we've also got those temperatures. I mean, just take a look at this. It is going to be hot, not just warm, but hot, 40 degrees, and then high 30s across much of central and even in towards southeastern Queensland. It's going to be well above 30 degrees throughout Thursday. These thunderstorms are going to have plenty of evaporation in the atmosphere to make the most of and really blow up some nasty clouds, which will result in some big, severe thunderstorms. And then we've also got convective available potential energy, which is an arbitrary, well, all of these numbers are pretty much arbitrary numbers unless you really break them down in detail. But when we start seeing these uh, more orange and intense colors, the orange towards the reds, we do know that there is a lot of energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to make the most of. And I really haven't seen a better setup all year so far for severe thunderstorms across parts of central Queensland. There's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of fuel for these thunderstorms to make the most of, especially later on into the afternoon and evening around the uh, Dingo Edders Void and down towards the Gympie area. I don't think Gympie itself will receive thunderstorms as well. That's worth adding along the Sunshine Coast up to about Bundaberg. I don't think any of those locations are going to receive thunderstorms or severe weather, but I reckon 
uh, later on the night, areas between sort of Harvey Bay, including Bundaberg, Gladstone, Agnes Water, and then up towards Rockhampton, and maybe even Ogmore, will get a storm front blow through. Uh, by the time it gets to the coastline, though, it will likely be a high precipitation squall mode, which means rainfall and damaging winds is the main threat, and the risk of tornadoes and large hailstones does dwindle off. But specifically around the Biloela area, and at around 6 or 7 p.m. by the looks of things, just looking at this forecast here, where we have some very intense thunderstorms now on the forecast outside of Biloela and up towards Gladstone and Agnes Water, not quite making it to those locations, uh, the, the latter locations just yet. But I mean, just looking at this forecast here, this looks to be the prime area for potentially severe thunderstorms and some nasty supercells later on Thursday evening and into early Thursday night. It is going to be an interesting night indeed. There'll be detailed updates tomorrow and on Thursday morning as well about these severe thunderstorms. Certainly something that you've got to be keeping an eye on and certainly something that I want to be all over. And also in other news, we've got thunderstorms extending up towards the Charters Towers, Huendon, and Corumba sort of area area in more sort of northern Queensland. They're expected to be non-severe, but I wouldn't be surprised if a few severe cells fired up around the Croydon or the Georgetown area. That wouldn't be a shocker to me either. And then down in towards immediate southeastern Queensland as well, around the Gold Coast and the Brisbane Toowoomba area, we also have the chance of some thunderstorms later on Thursday night, really late on Thursday night into early Friday morning. Some thunderstorms are expected to blow up and impact areas around there. They will be isolated pulse thunderstorms by the looks of things, but the amount of fuel in the environment from this low-pressure trough looks to me to create some thunderstorms later on Thursday night into Friday morning, but they'll be closer towards midnight, probably around the sort of the 1 or 2 a.m. time frame here. So a little bit more unusual in terms of thunderstorm genesis, in terms of a time frame for those storms. But I mean, take a look at these convective available potential energy values. There's not going to be as much in terms of favorable conditions for thunderstorms, but when you're talking about convective available pot potential energy values this high, these are very high numbers, might I add, for southeastern Queensland. You can get thunderstorms even on pretty unfavorable uh, weather conditions, and considering the atmosphere is going to be pretty stable along southeastern Queensland, uh, wind shear is going to be quite low as well. The thunderstorms are going to have a hard time blowing up and organizing into powerful ones, uh, but just the convective available potential energy values alone look to be creating that risk of severe thunder, not severe thunderstorms, but pulse thunderstorms across southeastern Queensland. Certainly very interesting indeed. Thursday is going to be a day that we need to be watching quite closely, and 24-hour rainfall accumulations around Thursday, although they aren't ridiculously high, there's certainly going to be places around the Biloela area now towards Gladstone and Agnes Water that pick up at least 50 millimetres and potentially a little bit more than that under the ripe severe thunderstorm cell. As you get further inland, the rainfall is going to be more hit and miss and probably more of a miss than it will be a hit for a lot of locations. And then further north as well, the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss. And like I said, more of a miss than it will be a hit for a lot of locations. But those that do get hit by thunder cells could receive some pretty good falls as we have just discussed. Now, just before I finish off this part of the video, I want to be talking about some thunderstorms over in New South Wales as well, specifically along the New South Wales coastal fringes and up in towards the northeast of the state. We do have some thunderstorms expected to fire up Thursday afternoon and evening around the Tamworth and Armidale sort of area, and then out towards the uh, Barrington Tops outside of Newcastle and Tyree. We're going to see a few thunderstorms fire up there, and potentially severe ones as well, specifically around the Barrington Tops north of Clarence Town and south of Gloucester Star, uh, outside of Newcastle and Tyree. We're going to be seeing some thunderstorms fire up there, potentially severe ones, as I've just uh, said. So some good cells possible there later on into the afternoon on Thursday at around 4 or 5 p.m., and then another round later on at around 6 or 7 p.m. Further down the coastline, some thunderstorms expected into the western suburbs of Sydney, Penrith, just to name a few uh, out there, and thunderstorms also extending down into the southeastern corner of New South Wales as well. But these thunderstorms outside of the Newcastle area look to be pretty hit and miss, and they're just going to be pulse thunderstorms. Further north, however, we could definitely be talking about some uh, powerful severe thunderstorms, potentially organized supercell activity as well around Newcastle and then up towards Kempsey and Coffs Harbour. Some good uh, storms are possible up there. But as you get further inland, the storms are going to be much more hit and miss and much more pulsy in nature where they just fire up and then after a little bit collapse in on themselves. But yeah, all in all, for Eastern Australia Thursday, specifically for northeastern New South Wales and central Queensland, looks to be quite interesting for thunderstorms. Hopefully some much needed rain on the way for central Queensland as well. Certainly something that I want to be watching quite closely and it looks like those stars are aligning for a pretty good severe thunderstorm outbreak on Thursday. And we're not done either with severe thunderstorms, at least for Queensland and New South Wales. Another outbreak is possible this weekend. Across central parts of Queensland, you can see an outbreak of storms possible around Thursday, uh, around uh, Rolleston rather on Saturday afternoon. Don't know where Thursday came from. South of Emerald specifically, you can see here a few storm cells firing up there. Um, again, these do look to be a little bit too isolated and it's a little bit early on to tell if they're going to turn out to be severe thunderstorms 
possible. I'll be able to give you a proper answer on that later on this week and definitely by Saturday, that's for sure. But certainly something that I want to be watching quite closely. And then Sunday as well, we're expecting an outbreak of potentially severe thunderstorms powered by a surface trough extending across the Queensland, New South Wales border into northern New South Wales and southern Queensland around the Roma, St. George, and then down towards Thallon, Moree, and uh, uh, Tamworth and Armadale in the northeastern corner of New South Wales. Now, on the New South Wales side of things, the storms on Sunday, because of the low pressure nature of this weather system, looks to be more sort of rainy and the lightning strikes will be few and far between across the northeast of New South Wales. But Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon, rather, we could be seeing a few good thunderstorms across so uh, southern parts of central Queensland and then extending in towards southeastern Queensland as well later on Sunday night into Monday morning. Looks like they're going to get a pretty good front out of this, to be honest. So it'll be very interesting to see how this one plays out. We could be seeing, it, uh, seeing a long track squall line move through parts of Queensland and New South Wales. This is definitely something that I want to be keeping an eye on as well. And I'll be able to give you a definite forecast on this by Friday morning, hopefully, fingers crossed, depending on there's no major changes in the forecast either. But yeah, again, some pretty good rainfall expected from this weather system as well. Two-day rainfall accumulations between Sunday and Monday look to be very high across the New South Wales and Queensland border, between 60 and 100 millimetres, most likely around that sort of 80 millimetre ballpark. And it is also reciprocated between other forecast models as well, just not to the degree that the Eastern Wave is promoting at this time. So certainly something that needs to be watched quite closely and looks to be a pretty likely scenario now in the forecast. And you can also see a little bit of rainfall expected for the northeastern corner of New South Wales from a low pressure area. Uh, and that extends in towards central and southeastern Queensland throughout the early parts of next week, Tuesday and Wednesday specifically. Too early to tell exactly what the forecast is for those locations, but certainly something that we will keep a close eye on and I'll keep you up to date on. But yeah, looking very interesting across parts of Queensland and New South Wales, just with the weather scene, thunderstorms alone for the next 10 days. We certainly have our work cut out for us, tracking the thunderstorms and making good forecasts for uh, residents across central Queensland and New South Wales. I'm going to be on my toes for the next couple of months by the looks of it with the way these thunderstorms are firing up. But let's talk about something a little bit more tropical now. We haven't had any major thunderstorms blow up overnight, especially across the Northern Territory in WA. It was a little bit boring in all fairness. But you can see 10-day rainfall accumulations just continuing to uh, pile themselves on across parts of WA and into the Northern Territory. And even in towards far North Queensland now as well, we're starting to see some more consistent high rainfall accumulations firing up. And like we talked about yesterday, this monsoon trough, which is the line that I'm tracing with the cursor right now, now starting to extend into extreme far northern Queensland and the Cape York Peninsula. So it's not going to be long until that wet season rain really does start to pile on. Specifically around the far north parts of Queensland, the Cassowary Coast, not much in the way of rainfall is expected, just a couple of drops. I mean, 10 millimetres is, that can happen in five minutes up in far north Queensland. So uh, really nothing to be talking about there. Further inland towards the Atherton Tablelands, we could be seeing a little bit more rainfall out there and further inland from there towards Chiligo, Laura and Mount Carbine. We could be seeing some good accumulations up towards the 50 millimeter mark as well. So again, we won't knock any of this rainfall because it doesn't look to be too bad uh, on the forecast here, but still a little bit uncertain considering it is a long way out on the forecast at this time. WA keeping things uh, stormy as well by the looks of things over in central parts. So certainly some more tropical activity starting to happen there in terms of thunderstorms. And what we also have cooking in WA literally is the heat. It is going to get very warm very quickly into the early parts of next week. So Thursday is going to be a hot day with a west coast trough establishing itself along the WA coastline. Temperatures are going to start to rise into the high 20s of the southwest corner, early 30s for parts of the wheat belt, and even into the high 30s and early 40s for parts of the Murchison, and then into the Gascoigne, and of course up into the high 40s for parts of the Pilbara and Kimberley into up towards 45, potentially 46 outside of Derby and Roebuck and Fitzroy crossing up in the Kimberley region of Western Australia. It's going to get quite warm quite quickly. Friday as well, not much better. It's still very very, very warm with this low pressure area moving through the gold fields into the high 30s for some locations there. Saturday keeping things very warm across the coastal fringes of Western Australia up towards 44 for Marble Bar, 46 outside of Port Hedland, very warm indeed. Sunday as well, keeping things very warm again. Monday, it's going to start to warm up as a west coast trough continues to develop down the west coast of WA again, up to 30 degrees off for Perth on Monday. Next Tuesday, up towards 34. And take a look at this low pressure system here. We talked about this yesterday, but it looks like it's, head just, it's headed just far enough inland to prevent Perth from getting its first 40 degree day on Wednesday. But it's going to get very warm across the southwest corner of Western Australia throughout the course of early next week. Wednesday, a lot of locations going up into the high 30s and early 40s, especially 
especially in towards the gold fields by the looks of things. And even for Perth as well, expecting a top up towards the high 30s for Tuesday, 34 degrees expected there, with high 30s expected up in towards the weed belt. And even as far north as sort of Jinjin and Durian Bay, temperatures expected to soar up towards 36. But we'll see what the Bureau of Meteorology has to say on this forecast when their uh, 4 p.m. update releases tonight. It'll be interesting to see what their take on this weather system is. But it looks like the southwest of Western Australia is going to get very warm very quickly, as I've said about 800 times already in the last couple of minutes. Uh, summer is just around the corner. It's going to be a sharp end to the cold, miserable weather that we've been having. It was only 7 degrees here overnight. It was brutally cold, actually, for this time of the year. So it would be great to see some warm temperatures start to come onto the forecast and then come into fruition, which would be fantastic for a lot of people across the southwest corner of Western Australia. But yeah, anyways, that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. The support lately has been much appreciated. A lot to get through over the next 10 days. We're going to be flat out tracking over in central Queensland and into New South Wales. Then we've got tropics and heat forecasts to give after that and probably more thunderstorms. I mean, who knows? This time of the year, we're expecting thunderstorms pretty much every single day across parts of Queensland and New South Wales. And especially as we get into November and December, which is peak storm season for them, we're going to have our work cut out for us. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. There's no better way to stay updated with the weather than by subscribing to the channel. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.